I want to encourage you that this is a YouTube session. So if you start watching YouTube videos, I, that's really good. I love that. Like, I want you to do that, right? The, the goal here is this is your session, right? So my name's Chris. Um, I'm a Google trainer and innovator. Anyone else an uh, innovator in here? Innovator? OK, cool. A few hands. Nice. Yeah. Welcome. Hey, any trainers out there? Nice, yeah. So uh, if you want, you can check out those. You just Google them, Certified Innovator. Google for Education Certified Innovator. That's what you'd want to look up, Google for Education Certified Innovator. It's a really incredible group, and it's kind of a tough process. So I think it's tougher now than when I got into it, but you have to submit a video and do some work and that sort of thing. But what happens is you, you really get to be a part of a group of people that are, are doing amazing things, and they're really inspiring people. And trainers, if you want to do trainings. So today, the goal, the goal for this session, my goal, if you have a different goal, just shout it out. But uh, it's to learn how to leverage the world's largest learning library. You know, I think about YouTube, and I think, you know, if a school wanted to organize, you know, videos, if the school wanted to, you know, some of us might work in county offices where we may still have, like, loaner DVDs or... The reels, anyone work in those places? Yeah? I actually did check out one of those reels once, like five years ago, because my school was getting rid of uh, the projector, and so I grabbed, put it in my classroom, and I'm like, how do I find one of these you know, reels? So I've got one from the county office, plugged it in, we, kids, we watched it, and the kids were like, this is the best thing ever. Like, it rolls through the thing, and the light shines through the film, and then we see the images. I'm like, I know. It's cool. I had a typewriter, too, and they're like, can I type on it? <laughs> sure. Why not? Sure you could type on it. That didn't last too long when they realized that the keys are like, you know, an inch every stroke. Junk, junk, junk. Uh, I'm going to go back to the computer. So if schools try to organize it, right, like a county education office, you know, it's, it's essentially it's impossible to have as much as what YouTube offers us, right? It's impossible. It's impossible to organize that. It's impossible to own it, right? There's no way you could pay people to make all the content that's on there. There's no way, right? It's the same, like, predicament that I think Microsoft and Carta ran into when Wikipedia was born, right? You know, if you rewound, rewound the clock 20 years and you ask people, what do you, let's predict the future. What do you think is going to work, right? A team of like hundreds of amazing, you know, Microsoft employees getting paid lots of money with lots of money going into it. And then they sell the program and that sort of thing. Or volunteer people, right, from all over the world pulling together, right? The Wikipedia model. And it's like, where is Encarta now? You know? So... It's the world's le largest learning library, and there's no way we could afford it. There's no way. All right, so what is YouTube, right? All right, here we go. So I think YouTube is inspiring. Anyone seen this before? <laughs> Show that to your kids. Let's see what they do on the playground. <laughs> maybe, maybe you don't want them to do that, but maybe you want them to be inspired because your kids find this inspiring. If you find that challenging, your kids find it inspiring. You know, whether they're into basketball or not, that level of talent and that skill is crazy, right? That's like a whole nother level. And it's so easy to access this. So why YouTube? We can show the world. This is a Vice News, a little quick hit. This, is, uh, this was posted yesterday. Let's see. Hey, So this is real stuff. This was posted yesterday. Like, this is fresh content, right? This is fresh stuff. This isn't us just 
you know, trying to pop into CNN and see what we can find. But this channel, Vice News, isn't all appropriate, but you can find these quick hits, which are posted very, very regularly, of incredibly moving, you know, video. This obviously doesn't even have, you know, someone talking about it. It's just like, we want to share this. And this makes me think of, um, like, how, how are we getting, you know, news to our kids? Certainly this video isn't appropriate for our K through five, six range, right? But junior high, I feel like maybe, right? We can have a conversation about it. We can start looking into this. High school, certainly, right? Why would people, why would police be involved over energy access? Why? Who are the Roma people, right? That, this is stuff that like YouTube offers us, right? And it's all free, it's all free. And I love that because this is brand new. I mean, this was, I just put it on this morning and it was, Posted yesterday. We can certainly differentiate instruction, right? How many of you are using YouTube to differentiate your instruction? Right? Like, here, try out this video. This might explain it a little bit simpler, right? And as we move up. The videos that I have here, a lot of it is, like, watching YouTube is how I find these things. Finding out what other people watch on YouTube. Typing in maybe a certain event, right? Because Google is known for its search. So you can search things, maybe you're searching current events, and it's a lot about stumbling on things, I feel like, with YouTube, because there's a lot of great hidden content as well. And then how do we save it is really part of the question. How do we find things, and then how do we save things? How do we save it? Maybe we make a playlist, right? We can make a playlist. It's very simple. I can show you how to do that later. We can also subscribe to the channels. When we subscribe, they can notify us that, that the, uh, a new video has been published. But uh, I'd love to show you some of that stuff in a little bit as well. There's so much great content out there. And the best thing to do would be to work with people in your grade level, at your school. Like, let's start curating content, right? Let's start finding what we want to find. And I could show you how to do some, uh, some neat search engine tricks inside YouTube to help find what you're looking for. Yeah. But like the Roma one, I found that that news because I watch Vice News and because I know that Vice News, Vice, V-I-C-E, offers some pretty real, like engaging content and it's very fresh. Yeah. There's also Vice News on HBO, which is a different kind of show. Anyone watch that before? No. Okay. You all need to be watching more things, right? <laughs> Spend more time on YouTube, okay? That's the deal here. So like I was saying about differentiating instruction, we can certainly offer kids, you know, more complex concepts or things like that. But, you know, what, what this session is going towards, where we're going with this, is getting away from us just using YouTube as a replacement for what we're already doing, right? I just pop in the DVD and I show this chapter or this, this part for my lesson, or I pull out the VHS, some of us still have VHS, I know. Instead of doing that, right, moving away from that, moving, moving into more complex ideas, that's better for our kids. I'm not saying that we can't show something that we've always shown, but let's take it to a new level, right? Are we familiar with the SAMR model? SAMR, that's S-A-M-R. If you're not, just do a quick search on it while, while I'm talking. We're going to get to it in a minute. Uh, so why YouTube? Certainly we can uh, demonstrate dangerous experiments. I, like, this is some of my favorite stuff. Like, I love this stuff because I don't know how these people access some of these, like, chemicals and things, but let's see what we got here. Do anyone watch this, guys? Grab King your safety gear and sign the waiver because we're exploring five insane science stunts you won't be learning at school. Normally we don't think of metals as being very dangerous. We use them all the time. But sodium metal is one that's extremely reactive. The second it touches water, it starts ripping the water molecules apart and releasing hydrogen gas, which you can see is highly flammable and in some cases explosive. The vigorous reaction is exothermic and gets so hot, it'll spontaneously burst into flames and can explode. Now if a piece of wood is thrown on top, the elemental sodium blasts back with tremendous power and sends the wood flying. Now the reaction also forms sodium hydroxide, which is very caustic and typically used as a drain cleaner. But you might remember from a previous video, we can tame that dangerous chemical with bacon grease and make it into a custom bar of shower soap. We can pause it there. <laughs> 
This guy has millions of subscribers, okay? Millions of subscribers. Like, I don't think I understand the concept of what millions of subscribers means, but these are the kind of videos he makes. He just does these random hacks and creates things. And certainly some of your kids watch King of Random. Anyone have kids that watch King of Random? Maybe you don't even know, but they probably do, right? Now, instead of that, that first feeling of feeling like, I don't want my kids to watch this, right? Unfortunately, it's there, right? If that's unfortunate for you, I don't know. But it's there, and your kids can find it, whether they're at home or whether they're at school and YouTube is unlocked. They can find this, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Our whole point is we're educators. We're supposed to be educating our kids, not hiding things from them and then letting them figure it out on their own without us there, right, walking them through it. If you're a science teacher, you know how dangerous probably sodium metal is. I have no concept. It looks dangerous when you throw a brick at it in the water. Right, but you can walk kids through it. You know, you can use that as an as something visual, but then really bring them in because they're like, that was really cool, right? Like, let's get our kids excited about science, STEM stuff. There's over a billion users, right? Over a billion users on YouTube. Over 300 hours of content is uploaded every minute. Like, let's just pause on that for a second and pretend like we can understand that because that's insane, right? Over a billion people on one platform and 300 hours uploaded every minute, right? So this is a one hour session, right? So 300 hours every minute is, is that like 1800, 1800 hours? Please correct my math if I'm not going the right, right, right way, right? 1800? Now let's imagine that, say, 1% of that might be useful for you. Maybe you're not a science teacher, you're not interested in the king of random, or maybe you're not interested in the um, kind of gritty vice news type stuff, right? Maybe 1% might be good for you. What's 1% of 1,800? 18? What is it? Oh, it's 18,000? I dropped a zero? Oh, my gosh. So what's 1% of 18,000? 180? Is that right? 180? I should do my math before I come up here. <laughs> I'm going to consult down here for a minute. <laughs> we could just turn this into a karaoke session. So 18,000 and 1% of that is 180. The whole point is what I'm trying to get at is while you're sitting here, 1% of what's actually being uploaded, 180 hours, might be useful to you. That's this one hour while you're here. And that same hour is going 24 hours a day. That 1% that might be useful to you. That's crazy, right? That's new, fresh content. That's new. That's not stuff that you used last week or last year or five years ago. Now, it doesn't mean you can't use the stuff that's older. I'm just saying that there's always fresh stuff. And this is why YouTube is so important. And this is why YouTube becomes so important to our kids. Because people are being real on YouTube. Certainly your DIY, uh, the king of random guy, he just does cool stuff like that. But I bet your kids are watching people like Tyler Oakley. Any Tyler, Tyler Oakley fans out there? One. Any high school teachers out there? Guaranteed they're watching a guy named Casey Neistat. Anyone familiar with Casey Neistat? One person. Yeah. Just ask your kids. If you teach high school, if they watch Casey Neistat, just ask them. And then you should watch it. He publishes a video every day, every day. And he's not alone in doing that. Those are, they're called daily vloggers. Casey is C-A-S-E-Y. Neistat is N-E-I-S-T-A-T. -E Casey Neistat. He's a filmmaker, and he actually makes really good videos. So your kids... A majority of you raised your hands that your kids are publishing onto YouTube. So your kids are getting a bigger audience. But that can be scary, right? Right? YouTube can be very scary because it feels like there's so much unknown. But here's the deal. People respect and value original voice, original content. People respect that. Even if it's not amazing, if it's original, there's always some leeway in there. If it's original... Now, it can't be terrible, right, where it should have been edited, some of these basic things. 
Here's a good rule of thumb. When the kid wants to publish something or you want to publish something and you watch it, pretend like it's not your own video and you watch it, would you watch it again, right? Do you think that other people would want to watch it? That's a pretty good rule of thumb if you think it should be uploaded to YouTube. Now, of course, we can upload things and keep them unlisted, right? We can keep things private too, and that's all, that's fine. But if your kids are doing it, they're not making them unlisted. I'm guessing, right? I'm just guessing. They're making them public because they want to find out who they are. And they're using YouTube to do that because YouTube gives them the biggest audience possible. Bigger than writing a blog and your teacher calling out to other teachers, please read my kids' blogs and leave comments, which I love that. But that's still very small, right? That's still very small. YouTube is massive. Questions? Is it too serious? Man, sometimes I wake up, I'm like, it's going to be a serious day. Uh, so this one I love, and this is an older one, but it's called Africa uh, Desert Odyssey. This boy's name's Adam, and he's with the Toreg tribe, and I, this was filmed with National Geographic, and they follow him and his dad and his uncles as they ride camels through the Sahara Desert and trade for salt, and this was filmed like 15 years ago. 15 years ago, which is a lifetime ago, right, for our kids. But just for us, like, that's crazy recent that people ride camels in the desert and buy salt and then take that salt somewhere else. And then they trade that salt. And that's what this is, Africa Desert Odyssey. You can watch that. I don't need to, um, I don't need to play that. But this is really good. I love showing this to my seventh grade students. So YouTube, we can experience history. So why YouTube? Because we get to create but we're, we can share and help others. The videos that I like to post are ones where I think I might be helping others. Like that's, that means something to me. I'm not interested necessarily in daily vlogging. I don't necessarily want to create videos where, you know, I'm just like looking into the camera the whole time and talking about what's going on. But I'm interested if, if I know I have some knowledge or some skill, like loading my Minecraft on a, old Windows machine running Ubermix that probably means nothing to a lot of us here, then I want to post that video because there's going to be like 20 people out there that might benefit in that little bit of information. And your kids want this too, right? This is powerful, right? We all read Dan, <clears throat> excuse me, Dan Pink's book, Drive, right? We've all read that book, I imagine. If you haven't, Dan Pink, Drive, right? He's like a business guy, but it really has applications for us. And it's all about like, what do we need in our work environment as adults, but it applies directly to our kids in the classroom. And it's three things. We need autonomy, right? If you have your administrator in your room every day and then telling you what to do every day, please leave that job because you're not, you don't have any autonomy. Just leave that job. I, you know, if this is offensive because it's real, we need autonomy in our work. Not 100% we can do whatever we want autonomy. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we need some freedom to be ourselves, right, and have our own voice. Our kids need that too. Our kids need some autonomy. And again, I'm not saying feral children where they just run around and, like, you know, root for vegetables in the garden or something, right? We need autonomy. We also need a chance at mastery, which means we need time. We need time. That's what we need. We need time with things. You need time on YouTube. Your kids need time with the content. You know, 45 minutes in and out, and they're supposed to have grasped the entire concept. That's, that's a very difficult thing for anybody to do. It is. Even with all the tricks with setting up exit tickets and figuring all that stuff out, your kids need time. Because we all come to terms, and that learning solidifies for our stuff in our own way, Right? Uh, was anybody at the Leroy Finkel thing yesterday? Yeah, yeah so, so Tracy, who was uh, a contestant, are you here, Tracy? I was talking to her last night. She said that her project, which unfortunately didn't win, her project was all about how kids, uh, for kids to share their process of learning. For kids to share their process of learning. So if you're a kid, like a C student like me, right? C student guaranteed. C student. I see A students and I'm thinking they're just smart, right? They're just smart. But if we've read Carol Dweck's book about growth mindset, we know that that's not true. We're not just smart and dumb and then that's that. We're not just born that way and stuck that way, right? Our brains are plastic and they grow and they change and amazing things. But we need to know that process. 
right? We need to know the process, just like your kids need to know that process. And that was her Leroy Finkel. I'm sure it's available, even though she didn't win, for other people to take a look at. I don't remember her last name, but her first name is Tracy. And it probably has something to do with, like, transparency and process. So again, that, that, so I said autonomy, the chance at mastery. So that time, this is from Dan Pink's book. And then that third one, does anybody remember that third one? Purpose, purpose. We need real authentic purpose. And YouTube may offer us that purpose. YouTube offers me that purpose when I'm sharing some very strange video about, like I said, Ubermix and Minecraft, right? That's purpose for me. And so our kids need purpose. All right, moving on. We can certainly critically watch for discussion. Has anyone seen this video before? It's a little bit older now. No, that's fine, that's fine. That's fine. So this was at UC Davis. Do you recall this? You recall this, right? Where the students are like sit, you know, arm linked on the sidewalk. I honestly don't remember what it was about. Does anyone remember what it was about? Occupy. Occupy movement, thank you, right? So we have our students, these are college students sitting there and then the police are, are spraying them with pepper spray. Uh, but this, this video, right, somebody grabbed four different videos and, and synced the audio. So the audio is all the same, but the, the, uh, like where the cameras are at is in a different place. So you get to see sort of some different perspectives. It's not all of the perspectives, but some of them. This is going to give you a discussion in class. Do you agree with that? Anybody agree that you're going to get a discussion out of this? Right? Junior high, high school probably, right? But you're going to get a discussion. That was like two hands, by the way. That really <laughs> failed. Let's try this again. Anyone think they're going to get a discussion out of this? Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so I'm thinking when I watch this, it, like I start to feel stuff, right? I don't know exactly what I feel, like if I'm upset at the police or if I'm upset at the students or if I'm upset that we can even have something like this in a free country or whatever is going on, but we can have a discussion, right? And it'd be crazy if you have your kids, okay, who thinks that is, you feel bad for the police? Stand over here. Who thinks you feel bad for the kids? Stand over here. Okay, so the kid, you know, and then you flip them, right? You ever done that? It's like you flip, you flip their sides. So, so if you feel bad for the police, now you feel bad for the students. And now we're going to have a, you know, a structured conversation about this, right? Something productive. But I love it because it's real. It's real, right? It's not artificial. Like, this is real stuff. And maybe some of, some of your former kids went to UC Davis. So we have over a billion users. 300 hours are uploaded every minute, like I mentioned. And there's billions of views every day. And if you look at the statistics, which I have a link down, down there, take a look at them. They're pretty amazing. Like they're mind blowing how much people are watching YouTube. And I'm certainly adding considerable numbers to those uh, statistics, by the way. So YouTube is definitely learning and YouTube and SAMR. I love this idea here. So here's a, this sort of SAMR chart. I don't, th you know, some people maybe call it a ladder or whatever, but we have S for substitution, you know, A for augmentation, modification, redefinition. Substitution, that's just like where we are directly substituting a technology tool, right, for something that we did. So you get Chromebooks, and instead of having kids handwrite, you know, their essay or something like that, they're just typing it. That would be direct substitution. All the way up to redefinition, where it's something brand new that was not possible without the technology. So we're doing something brand new that we couldn't have done before. Not just typing an essay, but something brand new. So this is freely available, right? Well, it's in my slides, but this, this chart here, if you just look up SAMR, remember it's S-A-M-R. If you take a look at that, it's, it's definitely taking a work, uh, look at. Okay, here's my version of SAMR for YouTube. We'll start at S in the bottom there. I tried to match the colors, pretty close. So S, watching videos the same way we watch with VCR, film, or DVD whatever that looks like for you, right? So you found the video that used to be on DVD and now it's, you, you found that, that clip on YouTube and then you just show that. That's substitution. Okay, so A for augmentation, watching videos on a curated playlist, which is what I was mentioning earlier. It's easy to create a playlist and a playlist is just like an, organ, like an organized list of videos, just like a music playlist or a mixtape perhaps. 
and it's easy to change things out and, and to share that playlist. This is a great way of doing things with kids. So instead of asking your kids, go find a video on a particular topic for your classroom. Like, go find, you know, a video about gravity. That's very difficult, right? Because you're asking your kids to sort through those 300 hours uploaded every minute, right? And the bazillion amounts of hours that are already on YouTube. That's what you're asking your kids. So instead, you should have a curated playlist, something that you and maybe your colleagues have already put together. And then the kids can look through those 10 or 15 videos and say, find something that interests you out of this 10 or 15. If you want, you can go look outside the 10 or 15, but we think these ones are pretty good and like to... You know, hear what you say, too. <clears throat> we can also embed video in a Google form. Anyone doing that? Embedding video in Google Forms? So if you're not doing that, that's just like an easy way to like show a video and then maybe ask questions or things, right? But this is just augmentation. This is not, this is like we're still kind of down below this, this line here. So for M, modification, use closed captioning. Sometimes it works uh, pretty good. I'd say it works pretty good most of the time. Uh, we can use uh, for language translation, which I think is kind of a fun idea. And then certainly we can use the comments or discussion feature to interact with others. So we're all struggling with, like, how do we teach digital citizenship? Sometimes we struggle with it so much we just ignore it. Right? It's true. Right? Look, I'm just saying the truth. Sometimes the truth is not uncomfortable. But that's the way it works. Right? But we still need to get our kids there. And they need to know what a good comment is and what, you know, how to structure their comments in a way that people will listen, right? When you get comments that just say things like, you just wasted a minute of my life, you know? Like that doesn't really help anybody, right? But instead it's like, hey man, consider next time spending a little more time editing. Here's a video I found that may, might help you with your intros or whatever it is, you know, help you tell your story. Someone could be offended by that, but hopefully when that calms down, they can say, that's actually kind of genuine and I appreciate that. All right, um, Edpuzzle, anybody using Edpuzzle? Edpuzzle, anybody want to explain like how it works, perhaps? With Edpuzzle, you can customize any lesson. You can pick a video from a variety of places. You can embed audio. You can translate it. You can do voiceovers. You can give your kids quizzes. Um, and as they're watching the video, it can pause. You can chop a video. Um, I use it in all of my classes. In fact, I've trained my whole entire staff on it. And you can use it in any class for anything. It is awesome. Check it out. And then we get up to R, which I think is redefine or redefinition, redefine, I think. Analyze, right? Then create new movies using YouTube editor. We can create group vid videos with other YouTubers. So before, right, the, the whole the R idea is doing something brand new that wasn't possible before. Doing something brand new. And so we can now analyze the movies, which we could have done before, but then create new movies using YouTube editor. In YouTube editor, we can access Creative Commons videos. Very common complaint is that we don't have cameras or we don't have the equipment to do this, right? YouTube editor works on your Chromebooks, works on your computer lab computers. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work on iPads if you're an iPad only sort of classroom. <clears throat> Here's a YouTube editor and what I was just mentioning was the Creative Commons videos, which is right here. Really hard to see, I imagine, but it's a circle with a CC in there. Creative Commons is a form of licensing that allows people to use and remix the content. When we are searching images on Google, we should be searching and we want to use these images like in, in some project or something like that. We need to make sure that those images are appropriately licensed. Same with video, right? We can, if we want to use it in our own video, then we can search Creative Commons and you can just drop these in and edit them right here in the YouTube editor. It's all online, all online. I added uh, a couple videos just like flying. Um, I was like in the back of the plane and it was a really pretty day and I was flying out of San, San Francisco. And so I just had my, my phone, just kind of held it kind of steady, like stable right in the window and like taking off and like doing this big turn. It was like two minutes and I just licensed it Creative Commons. So I was like, it was really pretty. And like, I don't, I don't really have plans for it, but I was thinking, you know, it'd be cool if somebody used that, like someone else might have a plan for a really pretty shot of, you know, a plane taking off from the inside, right? And I put in the description, I said, hey, just let me know if you used it. And so I got a comment very recently, just a few days ago, that just said, hey, I want to let you know that I used your, your uh, 
airplane taking off video in my, in my flying video series. And it was not very good English, so I imagine that this person was not from around here. That's kind of what I assumed, right? But that's really cool that a video I made was being used by other people. I love that. Who's checking out 360 degree video? Yeah. So up here you see I've got a couple things. This is Google Cardboard. Has anyone checked out Google Cardboard? I'd love for you to check this out. Um, I can put my phone in there, pull up a video for us, and we can share it. This, uh, this red one here, this is the Mattel viewfinder. Do you recognize it? You can put your camera in there, and you can, uh, you can experience 360-degree video. Let me just pull up. Uh, I'll pull up this video, and uh, we can pass it around, and I'd love for you to take a look at it. What I'm doing on my phone is I just typed in scuba diving in the search. In the top right, which you can't see, but there's these three little like lines there. They're kind of like the hot dogs you see in Chrome. And then... In this extra search feature, it says 360 degrees. So I can just click that. What's happening with 360 degree video is people are using cameras to actually record 360 degrees at the same moment. And so when you put it in Google Cardboard, it's close to your face, but there's lenses that make it seem like it's far away. And then you are gonna move like this to look around, right? And I love this, scuba diving. I've never scuba, scuba doved. <laughs> what is it? Is it dived? <laughs> That's a funny word, scuba doved. So I'm going to put this in here, and I'd love to pass it around. I'm going to put it in this red one. You can definitely, like, and you pop open the top, and you'll have to restart it. Anybody interested in checking this out? Okay, after me. I'm just kidding, I'm teasing. What was her hands here? You pass it back when you're done. Okay, so he's going to take a look at that. There's a, the cardboard, which has been well loved. I can start over here, but you have to put your own phone into it. Anybody interested in that? It has to be like a five to six inch phone. So 360 degrees. Now suddenly we're not just getting experiences that are right in front of the camera. We're getting the entire experience. Right, and that's available on YouTube, which is pretty incredible. And uh, who has a Theta S camera to record the 360? They're starting to get more popular. Nobody, okay. They're about $300 and they're really small. Do you remember those old flip cameras? They're almost like that, right? But they've got a lens on each side and they're just like very bulbous. You can take a look at it. It's a Theta S, T-H-E-T-A, T-H-E-T-A. And you can record 360 degree video. So if I click here, for those of us that don't have the cardboard, and since we're not gonna move my, my screen around, I can actually move it around here. But what's crazy is it'll be playing. So there's our scuba diver holding kind of like a selfie stick. But here we are looking over to the scuba diver's right hand side. And if I pause it, I mean, I'm still able to look around. Amazing, right? Like, are we not fascinated by this right now? Like, I love it, right? And it's like my experience on YouTube is my experience. Your kids' experience is their experience, you know? I mean, aren't, isn't that why we're here? We're trying to figure out how to be better, right? We're trying to be better. Like, we don't want to go back on Monday and feel overwhelmed or feel like, oh, my God, there was so much. I don't even know what to start with, right? Start with YouTube. <laughs> Forget all the other ones. Okay, you've seen this one, yeah? So uh, here's some ideas I have for us to kind of help us work through SAMR. So for YouTube and language arts, we can watch inspiring videos. And then uh, your kids, and you included, should describe your experience using sensory words. That's a clickable link. I just typed in Google, like, sensory words. And I think it's a PDF. Just a quick, you know, that might work for you. Find your own. That's going to be better for your own experience. <laughs> it's, like, so close. There you go. We're not right over it. Yeah. 
There you go. It's beeping. So now technically your device is on. Can you tell? Oh, that's exciting. So she's hearing for the first time, right? And people are sharing this with us. Why? Why are people sharing that stuff? 300 hours of this kind of stuff is being uploaded every minute, so there's got to be a big why, right? I don't necessarily have the why, but it's definitely inspiring, right? And I'm sure you all felt something. Some of you might even be wanting to tear up a little bit. I always get the goosebumps with this one. Um, YouTube and history, certainly a lot of us raised our hands that we're using a history class. I told my kids, I said, look, I'm really bored with what we're doing in class. So freaking bored of posters and all that stuff. Like, and they're bored too. Like, this is not me just coming to this on my own. They're basically like screaming at me saying, you're boring. So I said, look, let's turn it into an experience, right? Let's turn it into experience. And so how does YouTube fit into this? Well, the kids brought in a canoe to help us experience the Lewis and Clark expedition. The dad like drove up with a truck and he's like, so I'm bringing you a canoe? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> like, that's pretty funny. And so then the kids got in the canoe in the classroom, and you can kind of see the screen projector in the back, and they're, they're facing the camera now. But what we did was, or the, they did, was they found a video of river rafting, right, without the, the raft. So it's just going down the river, and they had another kid going around with like a spray bottle and spritzing everyone. And they had a narrator telling us what's happening and where we're at along the trip. You know, and after we got off, and then, you know, I got to be the bear, the grizzly bear that chased them around. Anyways, good times, you know. <laughs> I love that stuff. And you know what? I bet those kids still remember that. You know what I mean? I remember it. I loved it. Okay, YouTube and history, we can watch it for context. Um, this is, uh, have you guys, okay, you need to check this guy out really quick. Just a, just a few seconds. Today we're making a fine hasty pudding. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on 18th Century Cooking with James Townsend and Son. So these are technically commercials because they so sell today I'm joined all this by get up. Michael Dragoo. Michael, do you remember the vermicelli yes. episode I did. So a viewer asked, did they use the vermicelli uh, without drying it? And I said, a, a thank you for laughing. I love it. I love this. And I was showed this to my grandpa a little while ago and he loved it too. It means like they're so into it, right? They're so passionate talking about vermicelli. I don't even know what that is, but they're talking about it, right? Do you dry it first or just use it wet or something? I don't know. But there's a bunch of these, and they don't sell you anything, right? That just that first intro is all you know that it's a commercial. 21st century James Townsend and Sons. And they have, he cooks outside, he wears like a soldier's costume, amazing stuff. I love this. But how can we use it? We might recreate events and characters in new ways. Maybe this gives us some context, but maybe we want to create things in new ways. This one, this is great, I love this. We can watch for, for math, we can maybe watch a, a video. This is kind of quick, so you gotta watch it quickly. And then think of some questions. So what questions do you have? You have to have some questions about this, right? Just shout them out. What do you have? How many pennies? How long? How much does it weigh? How much is it worth? What's the area? Why? <laughs> How many levels? Right? We can ask questions. Certainly there's some questions we could probably like try and count and figure it out. But you're curious, aren't you? You're curious. And curiosity is a wonderful thing for us in the classroom. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, you remember this guy? Chris Hadfield, Canadian astronaut? No. Yeah, thank you, right? Okay, let's watch this. So for science, YouTube and science. And the question is, if you get a cloth dripping wet without gravity and you wring it out, 
what's going to happen? What will happen to a wrung out cloth? So, and I had to use equipment that was here on board the space station. We may have the coolest washcloths ever here on the space station. I'm going to show you. Here's one of our washcloths. And it's packed it. It's put down into this little tiny hockey puck so that uh, it saves space. But when you open up a hockey puck and you pull out your washcloth, this is the one I'm going to use for the experiment today. And so when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise somewhere. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm going to get this soaking wet, and then we're going to see what will happen when we wring it out. Meredith and Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space, so instead I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's... let's okay, you want to move on? Let's go to the next one. <laughs> oh, wait, are you telling me you want to learn something? You want to learn about what happens, right? So we can pause and make hypotheses, right? Maybe your kids weren't involved in sending this uh, idea to Chris Hadfield in the space station. But maybe we can make our own quick assumptions. Think to yourself, maybe share with a quick neighbor, and I'm going to press play in about three seconds. What do you think is going to happen? Anyone interested in being an astronaut right now? I know, I would love to be there. The water is all over my hands, in fact. It rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. Okay, so the experiment worked beautifully. And the answer to the question is, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension of the water, it, um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth, and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands or gel on your hand, and it'll just stay there. Wonderful moisturizer on my hands. <laughs> and the cloth doesn't really unravel itself. It just stays there floating like a, uh, like a dog's chew toy, soaking wet. Great experiment, worked perfectly. What does he do with it now, right? Like that's the next question. Now what does he do with that really wet washcloth? Does he like suck on it? That's what I would do if I was him. So the question I'm going to leave us with is how might you use YouTube? How might you use YouTube? You know, so what did we cover? We, we were covering some SAMR stuff, right? Moving away from substitution. That idea of we just are plugging in the DVD and playing that chapter or something like that, right? Not saying that that's bad, but let's not just do that, right? We can move away from that. We can be creating YouTube videos using the YouTube editor, the Creative Commons videos in YouTube editor, meaning you don't even need to go out and record the video. Someone might have recorded it already and then licensed it so you can use it, right? We can uh, be using something like Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is that great way for us to use a video and then it has these parts where it'll pause and then there's a quiz and then your kids would take that, that quick quiz and then they get to move on. What other ways, really quick before you go, what were you thinking? You're like, I might try that. Maybe it's about hypotheses and science experiments. Great for the foreign language classroom because you can bring in the whole world. I did a Google Maps session yesterday and there's a really neat thing. Uh, there's a game called GeoGuessr where they'll drop you into like a random spot in the world and you have to guess where you're at and you use, a lot of times it's a foreign language and you have to try and figure it out like on buses and you know signs on streets and things and that's really fun. So yeah, so absolutely for foreign language, uh, bringing the world into your classroom. One more.
Okay, that's okay. <laughs> I can't pressure you to give me one more. Listen, I am available to, oh, there's a hand. Sorry, I can't see over there. Okay, so the, 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 the question is, or the comment, excuse me, the comment is about, you know, schools that, that block YouTube videos, and certainly we can download those videos, yeah. You can just Google it, download the video. There's online programs that will download it for you. If you're uncomfortable with that, you can check out the licensing. People download videos all the time and then remix them and make comments on them. Those are very, very popular videos on YouTube. It's not against the YouTube licensing to download a video and to show it, because you're still just showing it. You're not claiming that it's yours. Right? If you say that it's yours, then you're breaking the YouTube licensing. So yeah, certainly figure out ways to bring it into your class. I've got a lot of ways. Not enough time, I suppose, in here. There's ways to download videos. There's ways to remix things that work better for us. Uh, but get your kids involved, right? Don't feel like this is just on you. Your kids might be watching YouTube more than you. You know, find out what they're watching. And don't judge it. You know, don't judge what they watch. Just listen to them. Listen to your kids and find out if what they're watching is something maybe you should start watching, then that might give you a clear picture or an idea of who your kids are, right? I mean, we can't be proper educators without having a, some type of relationship with the kids. It can't be just us commanding them to do stuff without knowing who they are. So use YouTube to get to know them because they're using YouTube to get to know themselves. That's what they're doing. So anyways, I don't know what time it is. My phone is out there and... Uh, <laughs> That's cool. No stress. Uh, you're welcome to take a look at those cardboard things. I would appreciate them back. That'd be pretty cool. But thanks for coming very much. Thank you.